Well, hi friends. Good to be with you this Monday. And let's see, this would be, as you're watching it, Monday the 19th of October already. Good to be here. What a joy it is to be able to celebrate and worship and study from God's Word. You know, one of my philosophies of life and especially church life and church family life is that we do life together. And though we can't do that in our normal prescribed ways, in person and in, in the presence of one another physically, we do get to do life this way together. And just praise God for it. In many ways, God is growing us as a congregation, as a church family, and as individuals therein uh, exponentially closer. Maybe it's that we long to be with each other. Um, you know, they say absence makes the heart grow fonder, perhaps. I don't know. I tend to attribute this to the, the gift of God's grace on us in a very difficult time. So, when I say it's good to be with you, I, I really mean it. And I miss being with you in person, in uh, physical presence, but it's good to be with you here. We're still in the, I'm gonna figure out a place to put my phone here, but we're still in the parables of Jesus. We're going through Matthew and Luke. Today we're in Matthew again, the parable of the workers in the vineyard as it is known. A little windy still in the Tri-Cities, you know fall is here, but uh, what a joy it is to be able to get out at least and enjoy God's presence. The key verse here is Matthew chapter 20 and verse 16. So the parables recorded in Matthew 20, the very beginning of that chapter, verses 1 through 16. And I'm not going to read that for us today just because of our time, but hopefully you could pause our video here together and read that text and then we'll know what we're talking about. Or you know the, the parable all too well. It's a well-known parable of Jesus. So Jesus is teaching crowds in Judea and the key verse there is verse 16 itself. The point of the parable, Jesus says, so the last will be first and the first will be last. A summary of the parable is, goes this way. The, the parable talks about workers uh, who are in the service of a landowner who hires four different sets of laborers throughout the course of the day. And when the workday is over, all the workers save, uh, get the uh, same wages. So uh, the parable says that there are those at the very crack of dawn, the beginning of the day, and they get paid and they're hired, and then uh, midday they're hired, and then later in the afternoon, and then just a, a few hours before quitting time, the fourth set of people are hired. And all of them get the same wage. It's a day's wage. Well, those who started out in the beginning of the day uh, cry foul. That's not fair. But the generosity of the landowner uh, transcends the boundaries here of what they believe is fair and just. The landowner points out that the early workers had agreed on a price and were fairly paid, a day's wage. So who cares when you started the work, if you started at midday or later afternoon or right before quitting time, the wage was still fair for a whole day's work. The fact that the landowner showed grace on those who showed up later and only worked for an hour, well, that's good on the landowner. And by the way, takes nothing away from those who worked the whole day. And so let's relate this to the people that Jesus is talking with. Israel, if you put them in this parable, Israel was like the workers hired in the morning. You see, Israel had been a part of God's plan and still is a part of God's plan from the very beginning of the day. Through Abraham, God created a nation, Israel, 
and these are God's chosen. But along the way, God has hired others as his people. And so Jesus was responding to the natural resentment that was there, but all the more that would come when God's kingdom would be open to every nation and every people group. You know, I think about this in our context then for today. Do we have the same attitude as those who are in Christ Jesus and following him? I think it's easy to. I find myself as one of the beginning workers that started a long time ago in my Christian formation and my discipleship, my followership of Jesus Christ. And then I see others who have come to Jesus later in the game. I've prayed, I've literally prayed with uh, non-believers on their deathbed where they claim Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. And sometimes I think, that's just not fair. <laughs> Why do they get the same gift that I do after years of discipleship? But that's the wrong attitude, isn't it? Our attitude should be towards the other, that God's grace found them and that they received it, whether in the beginning or on their deathbed, salvation is theirs. Friends, I don't know where you are on kind of this spectrum or in the gamut of what we're talking about, but not only do we receive the gift of salvation by grace through faith as more than fair, but whenever and whoever receives that gift, we too must celebrate and give thanks to the Lord our God, the Father of the universe, creator of all things, the true landowner, that his gift of grace and salvation came to another. Let us pray. Lord God, we're blessed to be here together. Thank you for this week. May we live it in a way that brings you glory and honor. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Hey, great to be with you. Love you, miss you. See you next time. Bye-bye.